Hi, I'm Patty Poulter, Dean of the College of the Arts here at Kennesaw State University, and I'd like to welcome you to the Fall 2013 Roundtable. I have with me a group of students who are going to ask some questions, and we're going to visit together some today. I hope that you can sit back and enjoy it. My name is Tari Hodo. I am a senior here at KSU. I am a BFA, pursuing a BFA in drawing and painting, and also pursuing a BS in art education with the art history minor. Okay, so Tyree, you have some questions for me? Sure, do. Be kind. <laughs> I'll try. Okay. Will non-art majors be allowed to take art classes sooner or later? Uh, that's a really good question, and one, when I first came here, I was uh, saddened to hear that, that space is so tight that non-majors couldn't take some of those art classes. So uh, we'll probably talk about this more throughout our time, but definitely adding space so that those students uh, that want to partake and, and engage in the arts will have opportunity to do so. Right now, our, our primary goal is to serve our majors. We have to do that. Uh, but we have very definite working plans to expand space, studio space, classroom space, and we have a great team of folks from School of Art and Design and from the facilities and design area working together on that. So it's definitely going to happen. It's a high priority for us. Okay. This is a question that is personal to me because I also work and go to school. But in this economy, many of us work and study. Did you have a job while you were in college? Absolutely, uh, sometimes more than one. Uh, I was the first in my family to ever complete college, so uh, we didn't have much. And so uh, I was fortunate to have great scholarships, but I also had to have other money to live on and to buy, I was a music major, to buy music, to buy books and supplies and those things, and just to buy groceries, you know. So. Um, so yes, I've done all sorts of things. I worked in the summers always. I've worked in a factory. I've worked as a gardener. I was a bartender. I worked in a Hallmark gift store. I've worked, uh, I played in bands all the way through school. I played lounge piano. I sang at weddings and funerals and as church musician and anything I could do to make money and would save that. And in fact, I instilled that in my own children that they, when they started getting jobs in high school, half of everything they made went to save for college. And they also worked while in school and they were able to get through undergraduate without any debt. But, uh, but yes, I completely understand that the working and going to school is a huge challenge for students and one that uh, I try to honor. I understand there's a lot of pull on students' times. I respect that. Recently, Kennesaw State University was featured in an article in Creative Loafing, which is kind of a Atlanta arts mag. Mm -hmm. And they talked about KSU arts program, saying that it will be the new place to be as far as the arts right. in Atlanta. People won't be going to Atlanta anymore they'll be coming to Kennesaw State. Mm -hmm. How do you plan to further that goal to expose KSU to the Atlanta art scene? Well, uh, first of all, that was a great article, and uh, I spoke with the woman who wrote that. We spoke a lot about KSU. And uh, so I think she's right that a couple of things are happening. There's this, uh, as the metro area expands, there's a sense that it's not really that far to get here from Atlanta. But the other thing is our faculty and students and staff are so connected with the Atlanta art scene and so engaged in it that uh, those any lines that, that existed or continue to exist, I think, are blurring quite rapidly. You know, uh, it was mentioned in that Creative Loafing article about our faculty and that, have, that we're part of a big show at the High this, this uh, past summer and fall. And our uh, student actors have been recognized in Arts Atlanta and our dancers and our musicians. And uh, it's, I, 
I think those, as I say, those lines are blurring and disappearing rapidly. What I'm doing is I'm engaged in as many activities as I can with folks that are connected to the Arts Atlanta scene and getting to know them. And I think what's interesting is I have yet to meet someone that hasn't heard of KSU. They know of what, of, they know of the things that are going on here and are very, very curious. So we're doing very targeted and strategic uh, moves to connect folks with, with getting them here, with bringing our students and faculty there in highlighted ways. But this is, it's, it's very organic. I don't think it's something you can force, but it's organically occurring because of the quality of student and faculty engagement and work that's happening. Scholarship as well as production. That's true. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Jordan Alfredson. I'm a senior in the School of Music, and I am majoring in bassoon performance, and I'm also studying orchestral conducting. Okay, Jordan, what do you want to find out about? Uh, one of the most important issues that I've um, heard as someone from the School of Music is, as the College of the Arts grows each year, uh, demand for practice rooms, recital halls, and I've also heard the visual arts space is very limited. Uh, what can we expect in regards to physical expansion in the coming years? I'm really glad you asked that, and I tell you one of the first, even before I arrived on campus, those were some of the things that I was looking into. Uh, I, expanding space and meaningfully and strategically is one of my top priorities, and we, I meet, if not every week, sometimes at least every other week with the uh, folks from the different departments and from the facilities and design people. So we have about five projects right now that we are looking at, that we are planning for, working with architects to uh, get some, some sense of how space can be used, where we can expand based upon the campus master plan, and along with that, uh, looking at how we're going to expand our graduate programs and offerings, certificate offerings, and working with, we have a wonderful development person. Development means the person that helps us raise uh, funds and friends for the college and the departments and different initiatives. And her name is Allison Fichter. And Allison and I meet every single week and help to, and to prioritize the needs. So she has the stories of what our challenges are, what our needs are. And so when she's with potential donors, because we want, we, we want people to find a way to connect with us as well and to help students that way, she has those stories that she can tell. But we, we certainly have expansion uh, plans in place. I think the earliest we'll see those because of the way different things, uh, pieces have to fall in place will be summer of 16, you're going to see some really significant things happen. But that's still quite fast, you know, considering the needs we have. But definitely, we need all of those things. We need practice space, we need more painting studios, we need a smaller recital hall, we need more office and studio space, we need, uh, we need to have all of theater performance studies design to gather in one place. Our dance program, we, we have planned expansion space, but we need to get, you know, get that happening. So, so part of my job, I believe, is to work with these various constituencies to hear what their needs are for accreditation, for de delivering program, for uh, planning for growth, uh, and how we can strategically plan ahead at least the next five, seven, ten years, what needs to happen in what succession. And that's, that's part of what I do. Uh, I would say um, it takes up a good, good portion of my time, and, and positively and happily so. So uh, unfortunately, as a senior, you're not going to see some of that happen, but I hope you as an alum help make that happen however you can and that you support our efforts in doing that and, and getting the story out of, of our need and our amazing things that happen, even given some of our constraints. Absolutely. Great. Um, what is your top priority for the College of the Arts? That's a great question and a tough one because I, I think that my priorities um, are are divided in terms of, the, there are categories of priorities. Number one, students, and what students need in order to grow and develop to become the best, most effective, innovative, and change effectors that they can be in whatever they choose when they walk out the door. 
um, that faculty and staff have what they need in order to deliver that program, that staff um, are able and faculty are able to continue their growth, that we continue to become the nationally and internationally known place that we really can be. Uh, so I guess the, my goal is that everybody knows what we already know, that this is, that there is no other place like this for being innovative, balancing the foundations, the canon, if you want, if you want to use that word, the, the heart of each discipline, while at the same time recognizing that, that the arts are a living, breathing, growing, amazing way that, that we articulate what it means to be human and that we, that we inform our communities and constituencies. So this balance of this, this tradition and this entrepreneurial interconnectedness is, is exciting. And I think we're doing it in ways that nobody else is doing. And my overarching goal, I guess, is to get that out but to maintain it and grow it so that whenever any, any entrance point that a person has to the arts or the KSU as a whole is, is an experience that changes them for the better. Uh, in the future, is the College of the Arts going to offer any graduate or even postgraduate degrees? Oh, absolutely. We, are, we have several in the works. Uh, because we're part of a Board of Regents system, there are very specific systemic steps you have to go through to get those approved. But those, uh, even when I came to interview, uh, that was something that was discussed. Uh, and it, it will happen, there's no question. And, and that planning and, and discussion, the, the initial planning is, is in the stages for several advanced degree programs. And we have some that are you know, ready to move forward for approval. So yeah, there's no question. We need to work on infrastructure to be able to support those. We have the people, we have the knowledge, we have the, the desire, uh, uh, and we have students that want to come here. So it's just a matter of getting all of those pieces uh, on, in a row so we can do that, but it'll happen. There's no question. After you get your graduate work done, you can come back and, sure. and uh, maybe you can come back and teach today. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thanks. Thank you. Hello, I'm Sarah Whitener. I am a dance major, a modern concentration, and I am also a communications major, a PR concentration, and I am a sophomore. What have you got for us, Sarah? <laughs> In the past year or so, the university as well as the dance department has grown so quickly. And one problem that we all face is transportation, getting to and from class, being late, either getting to dance class or leaving dance class and being late to our others. What is your solution to this problem? Well, it, it's interesting that you would bring that up because uh, the folks in dance, Dr. Pulankala and Amanda George, uh, came to me immediately the first week of classes because there were some challenges that if you don't know uh, dance is housed at Chastain Point which is really uh, for someone coming new to campus we just feel like that's part of campus it's it, but but I, I think uh, there has to be a there's a bit of a change in understanding how much student activity occurs there and students are not allowed to park there and understandably so so uh, We've been working immediately from that first week of classes to help the folks in transportation who have been wonderful understand those needs, looking at the routes, and as we, uh, not only just the routes themselves, but the, the actual vehicles that are brought so that there's enough space, uh, we're going to revisit that after this semester. One of the challenges at the beginning of this semester was there was a new classroom brought, in, brought online there in dance that they were unaware of. So they didn't realize there would be this mass of students that needed to come and go at certain times. And so, so that's part of just an ongoing systemic uh, piece of communication at any large organization. When you bring something new online, you have to revisit and remember, oh, these systems have to be in place to support that. And that's something I think that, that folks here at KSU are, 
are responsive to because they know we do grow and change fast. Traffic patterns do change. When a new building is coming online, when a new program begins, a class is offered in one place where it used to be in another part of campus, that changes things. So again, as we expand more to Ch the Chastain Point area, that's part of our initial planning, is how we're going to make sure we are moving students back and forth in a timely manner because you're here for academic and personal development and so we need to make sure you are in class when you need to be in class because what's the number one thing they tell you when you first come to school the most important thing i can say to you is go to class so we want to make sure you can get there and get there in a timely manner so thanks that's a great question but we are definitely aware of that and, and working on it has it gotten better it has good that's that's what we want to yes, know <laughs> What career advice do you have for students that are near graduation? Oh, that's a great one. I would say this. I read a, uh, I'm a voracious reader, and I read this great article a few weeks ago uh, on the model that a lot of us have heard about uh, our career, which is going up the ladder, right? That you're going, I do this, and then I'm up this, and then I'm up this. And they said that really, and I would agree with this, really isn't the model we have anymore. The best model is being a rock climber. That, and if you've ever climbed the face of a rock or boulder climbing, you know, you put your hand here and you say, does it, can I hold on here? Is this where it's a good place for me to be? And if not, you start looking, well, where, where do my, where can my strength take me? The things that I have within me and what I know about myself, what can, what, where can I go that, that can support me and that I can support it, that we can work together? I think if you think in terms of your career that way, that, that that's going to open up possibilities for you. The other thing is to, to think of yourself in terms of what is going to bring you the most alliance with your values. And that might seem an odd thing to say, that I would just say, go take the first job you can get and your parents will love you for it. And I do think that's important, but I always told my own children, I want you to be able to pay your own bills. That's important, <laughs> please. And, uh, but to do what makes you happy. Because when your values align with what you are doing, you are able to make a difference. And I, so, so I think those are several pieces to seek out your own opportunities, to recognize your own strengths, to know your own values, to collaborate. You know, if you've, again, if you've ever been rock climbing and you're with somebody else and you say, you say I can't see that from here, what does it look like to you? And you work together. I think that's one of the best things about being at a place like KSU too, are the relationships you build not only with your fellow students, but with your faculty here. Those folks, your faculty know you, and they know your strengths, they know things that are out there that you don't know exist. So to build upon those relationships, and uh, so that's what I would say, to keep, keep those things in check. Where are your strengths? Where do you want to go? What's it going to take to get there? Who can help you see things you can't see and align your values and you will succeed. Um, what is your plan on achieving accreditation for the dance department? It, it's in the works. Uh, so we are looking, uh, even before I came on board, I read the full uh, requirements for accreditation. I know Dr. Poulenkala is very aware of those. So we are strategically looking at where our what do we need in order to have, to have in place in order for that to happen? Which faculty lines need to be there? Which courses? So it's definitely in the works. So it, it will happen. And there's no question it would be accredited because it's, it's a, it is top notch and the depth and breadth of the program is, is outstanding. So it'll happen. Thank you. Sure. Hello, my name is Magid Rushdie. I'm a senior in the Department of Theater and Performance Studies with a concentration in performance studies and acting. Um, and Dr. Poulter, I have a couple of questions for you. Sure. Um, very importantly, will we ever get soft drink and snack machines in the Wilson Building? Has your dentist asked you about this? <laughs> uh, actually, it's so odd that you would ask that seriously because this was talked about last week in my budget meeting. I have a weekly meeting with the business managers and this has come up not only with the students but with some staff. 
And the very first thing I said is, how widely, how, how much do people really want this? But immediately followed by, if we did, we would have to have very, very clean and clearly marked recycling containers. Mm -hmm. that, that, that I wouldn't do it otherwise. I, I think that uh, these facilities are our home. And so if we have those, I have no problem with that. But if we have it, we have to keep our home clean. Mm -hmm. so, so I don't know. But it's odd that you would ask that, that, uh, that people have, that you would bring it up because right. others have as well. But I don't know. But if you do, you have to clean up after yourself. Well, That's all I, I say. Yeah. It's, it's the 18-hour days. I no, I absolutely <laughs> understand. And it is and for, for students in the arts, mm -hmm. uh, we are here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There's always somebody doing something. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't always make sure that you've brought a granola bar and something with you. So, no, I understand. But, uh, but I, I just don't know if, if it does what the timing would be. But mm -hmm. definitely a lot of recycling containers. I look forward to it. Okay, great. Uh, please tell us your favorite author, your favorite play, and your favorite style of dance. You're going to not like this answer, and that's that I am one of those folks that doesn't have favorites because okay. because I am a voracious reader, mm -hmm. as I, I, I said earlier about something. I'm one of those folks that I'll have five or six books at a time that I'm reading, and so I love... Uh, Police procedurals, okay. the sort of whodunits. I love those. I love uh, books on uh, historical things. Like one of my favorite books, though, is called uh, uh, "The History of Salt" or just "Salt," which is about how salt changed the world. Mm -hmm. Like a Roman being worth your salt was you were paid in salt because you could preserve food. Uh, one called uh, "The Dip The Disappearing Spoon," which is the history of the periodic table. Now, yeah. You're thinking high school chemistry. Fantastic book. Uh, books about genius and creativity, books about higher education. Uh, I really, really like historical novels. Mm -hmm. so, so I don't have a favorite author. But, but I would say things that engage my brain and take me uh, to another place and, and uh, inflame my imagination, those are the things I love to read. So those are the things I love to watch. That's, why, that's what I think dance can do. Is one of the things I love about dance is one of the same things I love about visual art and that I love about music is discerning patterns and seeing how those patterns are played with manipulated, um, uh, communicated in different ways, how within this structure, uh, really amazing creative things happen that take you someplace you didn't expect. You know, when you listen to a pop song, you know where it's going to go. You're like, it's not, you just know where it's going to resolve because you've heard it so many mm -hmm. times. Any art, or, including books, literature, play, poetry, dance, visual arts, sculpture, uh, a treatise, a uh, musical piece that you think you know where it's going and that creator of that work takes you someplace else and it's, it's balance of jarring and satisfying. That's what I love. So for me, I can't say that there's any one kind of any of those right. things. Um, I am inordinately curious about, about just culture in general, so. Um, so, talking about culture, we go into uh, my last question is, how do you feel, what do you feel the role of arts and arts education is in the local and global community? Oh, I think it's essential. Uh, I think it's a part of being human. And to leave the arts out of, out of education and opportunity for every person is to leave a huge part of who we are behind. Um, one of my greatest passions is arts advocacy at, uh, in, in the schools, in communities, but also at the national level, uh, like on, the, on Capitol Hill, going in, and lobbying uh, with legislators for arts funding. And um, this is something I love to teach about too, so maybe we should just have a special topics class sometime. But, uh, but 
When you look at any civilization and any society, there are three things that have been in place, no matter what that society is, is where it lives, it resides, how it's functioned, how, how advanced, or how we might say how primitive that society is. And one is some form of, of um, quantification, some, some form of counting, of keeping track of numbers of things. It might be ha you know, hatch marks on a wall, it might be bundles of sticks, it might be as advanced as, as the Mayan calendar, uh, but there's some way of counting things. And then there's some way of preserving ideas and, and transferring those ideas, whether it's you know, a full alphabet with oral tradition of stories, with, with drawing, whatever that may be. And the third is music. You know, and if you look at all of those, those are the arts, the ways of telling story, of preserving ideas, of quantifying experience. And, it, and then there's this belief among many philosophers that that means that music also exists to express those things that nothing else can express. And so, so that's maybe a lofty way of saying how important yeah. I think they are. But I think they're part of who we are as a person. The other thing is, just from a practical creative economy side of things, you know, the arts are a $67 billion economy in the, in the US. And uh, when you think of all the concomitant jobs and, uh, that are created through the arts, not just the artist herself, but, but the person that sells the paints, not just the actor himself, but the person who supplies the lumber for the scenery, not just the bassoonist himself, but the person who makes the instruments, who buys the ticket, who has the restaurant where people go before the concert. You know, it's just these concentric circles of, of impact. And that's, uh, it, it just elevates our existence to have cultural things. And um, when you look at any of these indicators of best place to live, you know, these top 10 lists or whatever, one of the things they always look at is the cultural life. Of, of the area and how accessible that is to a cross-section of people in the communities. And I think that speaks volumes. So uh, it's essential. Um, so I didn't write this down, but uh, this is kind of a question and an invitation. Um, uh, we have a registered student organization in the TPS department, uh, Kennesaw Improv Society Stupid. Mm -hmm. And every Tuesday we have, almost every Tuesday, we have uh, all skates where we invite uh, all students from other departments uh, across campus and faculty and staff to come join us too. And I was wondering if you would like to come out and join us in improv some night. I would love it. I would, and can I say all skate is one of the best titles I've ever heard for getting everybody at the table. Mm -hmm. So no, I would love it. Thank you very much. So could I ask you all a question? What do you love about coming to KSU? What do you love about your experience here? One of the, it's, it's everything. That's a, uh, I can't put it to just like one necessary. Well, that's good, because I couldn't give one answer to all the things you <laughs> asked me either, so. <laughs> um, it's uh, in, in the theater department, the TPS department, and I think it's because we're a TPS department of performance studies uh, that really focuses on human connection. Um, and what it means to, for your identity to perform yourself in a lot of ways. I think that's what performance studies brings to the table, is we have a very strong community. Um, I've been, I'm a non-traditional student. Uh, I was out of the Air Force before I came and started here. So I, I've been to school before and I've been an actor before and there's a lot of uh, cutthroat nature in the field of theater. Um, but it doesn't exist here. We all hold each other up and we support each other and we love each other. Uh, and that's one of the things I love about it. And there's room at the table. Yeah. And we yeah. try to lift each other up. We give each other opportunities. We fight for, I would rather every one of my peers to succeed, uh, whatever that means in theater, uh, than for me to have a leading role. That's fantastic. For me as well, I think it's like what Megan said, the opportunities here. That's that's the biggest advantage for me coming to Kennesaw is that, you know, I have the opportunity to study with uh, a bassoonist from the Atlanta Symphony. And I have a faculty member who is willing to devote their time to help me study conducting, which is what I want to do, which we don't have a program for yet. But we have s people who are willing to help you do what you want to do while you're here. And whenever there's an opportunity that opens up, whether it's bassoon, conducting, or anything music related, um, you know, those faculty members are not afraid to shoot you an email and say, hey, can, can you do this? Are you willing to do this? And we would be 
stupid, for lack of a better word, to not take those opportunities while we're here. Well, and they see that in you. <laughs> and I think that's, that's one of the things I, I love about KSU, is faculty get to know you and know your possibility, even when you may not see that in yourself. They see the possibility in you and, and, and say, why don't you do this? Yeah. That is such a loaded question for me because I've had such a great experience here at KSU. I really, I really can't tell you how many opportunities, how many doors have opened, how many things I have done within this program, channels that have led to other stuff in the Atlanta art scene, and just the people I've met. I've met wonderful people, and I've met wonderful professors, and everybody is willing to stop and talk to me no matter how busy they are. That's so huge to me, because we kind of get complacent in our ways where we just going through the motions of, I got to get this, this, and this done today. Because at the end of the day, this is their job. But knowing that the visual arts program is full of working artists that are always working on their own art also, and full of faculty that have some of the same aspirations that you have, but they had it back then and they already reached where they want to be. Even, even you, I strive to be a dean of art college one day. Fantastic. That's, that's my ultimate goal because I'm so endowed in this visual arts and just visual communication in general where I want to be a part of this for the rest of my life. I always tell people that I'll be a student for forever. I'll be a lifetime student because you learn anytime you open your ears. And that's just my own experience. So it's been a great one. Thank you. Um, even though my experience has just began compared to y'all's, I'm just a sophomore, I've experienced so much in the past year and a half. Um, to harp on what else y'all have said, the opportunities that Kennesaw provides, not only in the dance department, but is y'all's as well, it's endless. I've performed at the Cobb Energy Center, which I never thought would happen to me. The relationships that I've also formed in the past year and a half, they're going to last a lifetime. I've met people that have given me advice, have been willing to work with me. The professors at this school don't mind taking the time to help you in whatever it might be, if it's school-related, personal, you know, anything that you need, they're there. And that's one thing I love about Kennesaw. Well, thanks, you guys. I can't thank you enough for being here today. I learned so much from you all, and you need to come, and we'll work together. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.